you might naturally think that the highest marginal income tax rate in the UK is 45%. But unfortunately, you'd be wrong. It's significantly higher than that. If you're up to speed on tax rates, you may have read that the highest marginal rate of income tax is 62%. That already seems high enough, but sadly, that's still not right either. I'm going to attempt to explain when and why it might be even higher for some UK taxpayers, specifically those repaying student loans. The first thing to explain is what I mean by the marginal tax rate and how it's different from your effective tax rate. For your effective tax rate, you simply take the total tax you pay and divide it by your gross wages to get a percentage. The marginal rate of tax is different and more subtle. It's the percentage of tax you'll pay on the next pound that you earn. So it's irrelevant to where you are now or to what you've already earned, but highly relevant to your future because it should probably or could affect your incentive or perspective to work more hours or to earn more money. One of the reasons that your marginal tax rate may be much higher than you thought is down to repaying student loans. Prospective students are often told not to worry about taking out a loan or to to fund university fees or living costs, of course, as there's not a penny to pay back until you leave or, in fact, until you reach a certain income threshold. If only it were that simple, I'm hopefully going to try and explain how repaying student loans works. Firstly, remember how much you repay depends on your income, not on how much you borrow. Secondly, there are two main types of loan for undergraduates. There's the tuition fee loan, which is currently up to £9,250 for a full-time student in the tax year 2022 to 2023. There's the maintenance loan for living costs. This varies depending on whether you're living with your parents or away from home, studying inside or outside of London, spending a year possibly studying abroad, and if you're over the age of 60. Let's assume that you are a full-time student living away from your parents outside of London. You can borrow the full loan amount of £9,706 a year. That's based on figures for the academic year 2022-2023. stroke if you start borrowing the second you the second you start studying, the interest due on your loan starts rolling up at the same time. In 2022, the average student loan owed was £45,150. If you started your course before the 1st of September 2012, you must start repaying your loan the April after you finish your course, as long as you're earning more than the repayment threshold of £20,195 a year. You will pay 9% of your income above the threshold and you can make additional voluntary uh, repayments at any time too. For someone earning £30,000 a year, you'll pay approximately £73 a month. You keep paying until you've repaid your loan as long as you earn above the threshold or until 25 years have passed. For those who took out their loan before the 1st of September 2006, the outstanding balance and any interest is written off when you reach 65. If your course started after the 1st of September 2012, you'll be on the new repayment plan the repayment threshold has been increased to £27,295 a year. As with earlier loans, you keep paying your 9% as long as you continue to earn over the threshold, either until you have paid the whole lot back, which is something that only the highest of earners ever do, or until 30 years from the April after you graduate. That's five extra years of making repayments for people starting courses since 2012. But remember, the repayment threshold is higher. As a comparison, earning £30,000 a year on the new scheme, you'll repay uh, roughly £24 a month, compared to £73 a month on the old scheme with the lower repayment threshold. When it comes to the interest you'll pay, if you started studying before 2012, you'll pay 3% plus 
the Retail Price Index, also known as RPI, which is the most common rate of inflation used in the UK. It's the inflation figure used to calculate government wage negotiations and the cost of living changes. That currently works out that you'll probably be paying a very expensive rate of interest on your student loan. If your course started after 2012, the 3% above RPI has been scrapped, so you'll be paying the RPI from the previous March or 1% above the bank base rate, whichever is the lower. In a nutshell, you're likely to be repaying less each month if your course started after 2012, but potentially for much longer. The key point here is that it doesn't matter how much you have borrowed or what the interest rate on your loan is. The fact is that everyone pays 9% of their income over the threshold every year, and almost everyone pays until they are 50 years old. So, If you started studying after 2012 and earn £30,000 a year, you're going to pay £243 a year back. If you're making £40,000 a year, you'll pay £1,143.45. If you make £100,000 a year, you pay £6,543. Most people never repay their loans. That's because those that never earn over the £27,295 do not pay back a penny. Those who take a, a long career breaks are likely to pay back very little of the total sum. And even someone starting on, say, a £30,000 a year salary and getting a slightly higher than inflation linked pay rise isn't going to pay back the lot. For those that do repay some or all of their student loans, the 9% could be seen as a graduate tax that you pay on top of your income and other taxes. If you consider student loan repayments like a tax, this is where you see a jump in marginal tax rates. The basic rate is no longer 20% or even 32%, which is the rate which with national insurance uh, contributions added, but instead it becomes 41%. The higher rate taxpayer earning above £50,270 is not paying 42%, but 51% instead. And the marginal rate that kicks in as your personal allowance is removed from £100,000 upwards is not paying 62%, but 71%. In summary, UK graduates live with ridiculously high and largely unrecognised marginal rates of taxation they're perhaps possibly unaware of. If you've studied for a postgraduate degree too and taken out a loan to do so, then you could be paying another 6% on all earnings over 21,000. I'm going to look at an example of someone in that situation with outstanding student loans for both degrees, earning between £100,000 and £125,140 a year. Because of the impact of losing their personal allowance by earning over £100,000, they only get to keep 23 pence of every extra £1 they earn. The 77% or 77 pence in the pound marginal tax rate is made up of 40 pence in the income tax, 2 pence in national insurance, 20 pence because of your personal allowance has been withdrawn, 9 pence for your undergraduate degree and 6 pence for your postgraduate degree. At 70% marginal tax rate, you could be forgiven for asking, what was the point? Now, I recognise that these calculations are all before you throw in interactions with the benefit system, from universal credit withdrawal to marriage allowance withdrawal to the high income child benefit charge to the withdrawal of tax free childcare to the penalties for the unavoidable or inadvertent pension annual allowance breaches. All of these have the effect of shooting your marginal rate of income tax even higher. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, of course, please press the like button and help other people find my channel. And of course, subscribe so you never miss an episode. My name's Justin King. I'm a chartered and certified financial planner, and my aim is to help you live a successful life that often involves understanding your money. I host a podcast called the Retirement Cafe Podcast. You might like to tune into that. Check out the description below where I'll put a link in so that you can take a listen. Or, of course, you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, which hopefully is packed with inspiration and tips for a successful retirement. For now, I'm Justin King, helping you live your best life.